guys. Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast Coffee Break Session, the show where we cover foundational treasury topics and questions in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your coffee. This is your host, Alexa, and I'm joined today with Craig Jeffrey, Managing Partner of Strategic Treasurer. Welcome back, Craig. Good morning, Alexa. Yeah, so today we're going to be covering what is digital currency, and this topic was actually submitted to us by one of our listeners. So thank you guys for continuing to support us and for submitting topics for us to cover. So then, Craig, if you just want to go ahead and jump right into what is digital currency? Sure. We look at digital currency that it's money or value that's stored electronically. And this exchange of value um, as you're using digital currency happens via computer systems, uh, typically across the internet. And that's made up of three types, or we would look at it as three types of currencies, crypto, central bank digital currency, and virtual currency as defined by the EBA. Could you please dive into these three types then? I think you said crypto, CBDC, or central bank digital currency, and then virtual currency? Sure. And and there's some disagreements on what terms are the most appropriate. You know, the Fed oftentimes prefers the term virtual currency as opposed to digital currency. But uh, virtual currency, as defined by the European Banking Authority, um, I, I find that instructive or at least helpful. It's a digital representation of value that is neither issued by a central bank or public authority, nor necessarily attached to a fiat currency, but is accepted by natural or legal persons as a means of payment and can be transferred, stored, or traded electronically. I know that sounds like a a regulator's definition, but I think that idea that it's it's value that can be stored and traded is easy to understand. And I think when we look at these currencies like central bank digital currency and cryptocurrency, how we break out our organ the organization of this in our minds or the distinctions tells a lot. And so when we think about some of that, it's what's regulated and what's re- unregulated would be two of the initial categorizations that could be made. Cryptocurrency, a lot of people think of things like Bitcoin. Uh, central bank digital currency is the same type of currency, but it's regulated by a central bank. Like in the US, for example, it'd be regulated by the Fed or whatever um, uh, the national uh, banking system is of different countries. Those are some of the, the categories for digital currency. Uh, most people, I think, will think of Bitcoin first, but it's it's made up of a number of uh, different uh, currencies. How does digital currency work? So digital currency, um, oftentimes when you're transferring it, there's some method of exchanging and moving the funds. It's either done centrally or it's done in a distributed manner. So if you had something that was, uh, there was a single record or ledger, um, let's say at a bank or a central bank, that the exchange of value from, let's say, one person to another, one uh, company to another, would be recorded through that central ledger, that central validation agent, let's say the Fed, for example. If it's distributed, those records, that exchange of information on passing value is recorded on a series of, of these ledgers across the globe that that are connected so these ledgers update themselves. So instead of going to one source, you go to multiple sources. That's kind of the general overview of how that uh, transfer works. And really, when is digital currency used? You know, digital <laughs> digital currency is used, uh, you know, to pay ransom. Uh, and I know those that love digital currency will groan because it's also used to store value and, and make real trades. Um, you know, there's a, a country in South America who has made it a requirement that you can trade in their currency or in Bitcoin. And so they standardize on it. So it could be for regular trade. There's a number of retailers, both online and in person, that will accept uh, a component of Bitcoin and other payment methods. It's used for buying goods or services uh, or, or moving money, either in a regulated or an unregulated manner. So I feel like we've already kind of answered the next question, but is digital currency real money? Yeah, what's, what's real and what's physical? I think that's a that's not just a philosophical question. It, it has value. And so is the value, um, the, the full faith and credit of the issuing country, this issuing currency, or is it the 
uh, perceived value uh, placed by those who hold some type of digital currency that might be uh, a cryptocurrency that's uh, perhaps uh, publicly available that uh, adjusts up and down. So if people accept it as currency to trade, I think that makes it uh, acceptable as currency. It's real. It's an exchange of value. Uh, just because it's digital doesn't make it unreal. It might be non-physical, but it uh, it certainly uh, certainly would classify as real. You know, it's interesting in the U.S. The Internal Revenue Service views Bitcoin not as currency, but as property, and requires a, a fair amount of reporting uh, for each year on tax forms for everybody who's subject to U.S. taxation. That's interesting. And I really like that distinction that you made where you said just because it's digital doesn't mean that it's unreal. And really, if it's accepted as a currency to trade, then that's really what's kind of driving and making it real. So then how does digital currency differ from cryptocurrency? I would say it would be the the way I was defining it. And I know there's different ways people uh, create their, their structures of classifying things, but I'm using digital currency as the broader category of, of money or value that's stored electronically. So cryptocurrency would be one component of it. So digital crypto would be decentralized and unregulated. Decentralized meaning, you know, using distributed ledger and, and in an unregulated uh, manner. Okay, that makes sense. So then that really wraps up all of my questions. I don't know if you have anything else to add on um, what is digital currency before we wrap up. <laughs> no, it's I just uh, as we're talking, I just find out how hard it is to talk about this without drawing things or showing uh, how uh, you know how digital currencies differ and how they work. It seems to lend itself to a chart more. I think I think we need to put a blog entry with a, a few more pictures out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so then I guess to just recap, what is digital currency? So it's really money or value exchanged via maybe computer systems or the internet. There are three main types, which you said were crypto, the central bank digital currency, and then virtual currency. And I think some of the distinguishing features between those three is what was regulated and what was not. But then really, I think, again, one of the main points that I've gotten from this is that if, if it is an accepted currency to trade, then it is real. And you know, just because it's digital doesn't make it unreal. So I, I think that's a good, quick, high-level overview. You know, as you explain that, I, I think I, I should have said a little bit more, you know, in terms of if we're making our first breakout in our structure to be regulated or unregulated, in the unregulated environment, there would be something that's centrally managed as opposed to in a distributed or decentralized manner. And virtual currencies would be centralized but unregulated. Bitcoin, digital crypt, uh, cryptocurrencies would be decentralized in an unregulated environment, whereas central bank digital currencies would fit in the regulated uh, arena and other things too. Okay, that's great. Thanks for, for adding that there, Craig. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in and make sure you join back every first and third Thursday of the month for a new episode. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or want to submit a topic like we got for today's, you can send us an email at podcast at strategictreasurer.com. Thanks again, Craig. Thank you.